Thank you very much. Um, first of all, I uh, would like to thank the organizers uh, that I can present it here. Um, uh, yes, uh, so this is uh, my presentation uh, title and I would like to um, talk a little, <laughs> little bit about uh, Alshonik. Uh, uh, Professor Esther Banfi uh, had a really interesting presentation yesterday uh, about uh, Alshonik, but uh, the time period was the early Neolithic. Uh, I would like to talk about um, uh, the late Neolithic period. So this is Alshonik, uh, the site located in South uh, uh, Hungary, more precisely southeastern part of uh, Transdanubia. Uh, we can see the uh, outline uh, uh, map about the, uh, the time uh, distribution. Um, the early Neolithic structural culture uh, settlement uh, located here. The Transdanubian LBK uh, located um, in the middle part of the uh, of the site. And 90% uh, uh, of the settlement belong to the late Neolithic uh, culture. Um, this is the relative chronology in Hungary. The Transdanubia, this uh, time period, is Lengyel uh, 1 and uh, 2. In absolute data, um, uh, the settlement uh, lifespan um, from uh, 4,700 to 4,600. Uh, called BC. Uh, we have got uh, 217 uh, uh, absolute data uh, from the TUTL uh, project. Um, it was a large scale excavation and uh, it happened uh, 2006 to uh, 2009. We see a lot of uh, excavated area. All in all, um, the excavated uh, site uh, was uh, 23 hectares, but about the geomagnetic prospection, we know that the whole size, the whole uh, size of the uh, of the site, uh, uh, approximately 80 hectares. So I think uh, 23 hectares is a good. Um, uh, I would like to speak about uh, more uh, the north part of uh, the the site. Uh, this is the 10B or Ishonik Kanijabulu because uh, this site is it's absolutely unique uh, uh, because before we don't know so much houses and burials in this period all in all we have got 120 uh, buildings and uh, 2,840 uh, burials um, about a settlement um, what I mentioned the, the north part uh, of the uh, settlement uh, is uh, Absolutely, um, so the buildings located in this region. Uh, in general, the buildings are uh, above ground timber frame buildings and uh, just the post holes uh, show the, uh, the building's uh, plan. So we, ha uh, we haven't got uh, burnt houses or, or flat, um, uh, um, sorry, um, uh, walking uh, surface. Um, and uh, the most important archaeological feature from the uh, chipstone materials uh, are the pits, which located really close to the uh, northern wall, this uh, northern wall of the house. These pits are uh, really huge and really deep, and uh, and uh, the most of the material is coming from the pits. The burials, uh, all in all, we have got uh, 92 grave groups. Most of the uh, burials located in, uh, in uh, grave groups. In general, the oval-shaped burial is the most typical, and it was the first time where we <coughs> documented the rectangular-shaped burials with four post holes. Uh, it was a hypothesis, or a hypothesis that uh, these rectangular-shaped uh, burials are the richest grave and maybe uh, the leaders of the community. Uh, it's true uh, one side because um, a lot of prestige uh, goods coming from the rectangular shaped burials. But if we just focusing on the cheap uh, stone materials, it's uh, not uh, true uh, exactly. Um, the quantity of the stone assemblage, um, most of the uh, um, uh, stone tools coming from the settlement, part of the um, from uh, uh, Ashuni, the 10 B, it's absolutely a um, uh, high number of uh, the whole material. Um, our main questions 
that uh, what was the tool making procedure of the chief stone tools at Alshonik and uh, what were the volume and the symbolic volume of the local raw material from, uh, for this late Neolithic community because um, the local raw, material, local, local raw material is really important, not just the settlement, uh, just the, uh, the burials too, and what I mentioned that uh, the rectangular shaped burials has got uh, prestige items. Of course, a lot of uh, people would like to see that, oh yes, a big uh, um, cultural um, connection shows the non-local raw materials and so on, but the local raw material is really important uh, in the burials uh, too. And uh, uh, what uh, did show the new burial practice? What did symbolize uh, the location, the local raw, uh, the raw material and typological features of the stone tools? And in the higher level, uh, how can we understand the trans uh, transformation of the society? Because uh, this period is, uh, in this period, the uh, essential mortual, mortuary practice is uh, it's, uh, changed and totally di uh, different. Uh, in these diagrams, we see uh, the raw material distribution uh, on the settlement. Uh, the blue shows the local raw material, namely Machak radial right, uh, and uh, the red is the Bakoy radial right. It's located in trans Danubian mountains, and uh, uh, Machak is the local uh, supply zone, and the Bakoy, trans Danubian mountain, is a regional supply zone, approximately 1,000 uh, kilometers. 100, sorry, 100 kilometers, not thousand. Um, we have got some uh, distant or not uh, non-local raw materials. It's mostly the northern uh, flint varieties, Krakow Jurassic flint, uh, uh, Bolinian flint, uh, chocolate flint, uh, and uh, Carpathian radial rights. We have got some um, pieces of, um, uh, from pl uh, platen silex. And if we see the spatial distribution, uh, just another part of the site, uh, this shows the uh, big land culture pits. And we see that uh, in every pit uh, contain uh, raw mat um, stone tools. And it shows the uh, distribution uh, of uh, uh, Machek and Bakoni radial right. We have got only uh, eight pits which contain just the Bakoni radial right. So we can uh, suggest that uh, the whole part of the site um, uh, happened the uh, tool making uh, activity. If we see the uh, raw material distribution uh, in uh, burials, uh, the big circles show the whole uh, assemblage and the uh, 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 smaller circles show just the retouche tools um, raw material distribution. Uh, it's really similar uh, like a settlement, but we, uh, we can see some differences, not big differences, just only one part, uh, one uh, subset. Uh, the uh, the Bakoin radial right are dominate, but uh, the big difference, maybe the big difference, that uh, of course the number of the non-local raw materials is higher, but uh, we can see the same uh, non-local raw materials. Um, and if we are just focusing on the burials, um, uh, the main uh, question is uh, that we can find any, spe any uh, special position in the barriers. So uh, we separated um, the, the grave zone <laughs> and just the burial zone. And uh, in a grave zone, uh, um, from, the, uh, uh, um, from the description, we know that just uh, coming from the feeling, so we don't know exact place. But uh, we separated the, the four uh, post holes, and in the very uh, in the body region, we separated the skull, the upper body, lower body region, the left and the right side, and the leg region, and we use the same uh, system in the overshaped burials too. Um, this is the uh, location of the grave uh, in the graves, and uh, you can see the raw materials in overshaped uh, burials. Uh, most of the um, uh, tools coming from the filling, uh, the, the grave filling, the skull and leg uh, region. Uh, of course, the skull and the leg, these, these regions uh, contained uh, the most of variety of, uh, of uh, raw materials. Everywhere the metric radial right is the uh, uh, 
uh, most uh, frequented raw materials. This is the same, uh, so like the positions and uh, and the technological categories. Uh, the skull region is, uh, um, and the leg region is the most. Um, they they have that uh, the most of the uh, uh, typological categories, and uh, the blade is absolutely the dominant. Um, um, uh, mm, categories. Uh, in rectangular shape burials, we uh, see the the same uh, system, so the uh, position and the, the raw materials. Uh, the skull, as every non-local raw materials appear in a skull uh, region, and uh, the leg uh, region also contain a lot of uh, stone tools. But I think the most interesting that uh, in a rectangular shape burials uh, the, uh, the in the sky region uh, just we can find this, uh, the blades mostly big uh, blades I don't use uh, the long blades because everybody is thinking about that uh, really long blades it's the Volhynian thing the pressure uh, blades so I just use the big blades <laughs> So this is uh, uh, our big blade, and uh, the leg region is really interesting, and, and uh, it's a pattern that uh, we can find a lot of trapezes. Uh, I would like to continue uh, the logical way, just uh, uh, with the blades and trapezes. Um, these blades, uh, a lot of blades, are made from machak radiolite. And uh, it, was, it is the question that why is, uh, what is uh, the value or symbolic value and what is the meaning that they uh, use the local raw material but created the really big uh, blades and uh, they use the special position in the burials. Uh, it's, uh, um, from the geological background, it, it was the uh, other um, presentation uh, topic. But uh, I think it's, it's really um, uh, important from this question. Um, it's a core uh, from the settlement uh, uh, assemblage, and we see that this core has got a um, heavily worn cortex. And it shows the uh, voter activity, so we can uh, uh, suppose that uh, the river uh, valley and the river bed was the secondary uh, autochton sources and they use uh, to collect the uh, really good uh, knappable raw materials these um, these places. Uh, we did a geoarchaeological uh, field survey in the Mechak and we didn't find any big size really good uh, <coughs> radiolite pebbles um, so we didn't find the uh, Big Blades original core in the river bed, but uh, we found a lot of uh, outcrops, and these outcrops contain a really thick um, uh, radiolite intercalation, and it's absolutely useful to create a, a really big uh, blade cores and create a big uh, blaze. So we suggest that um, uh, the late Neolithic. Uh, tool making specialists absolutely know what is the best uh, raw material source and they uh, used uh, about what was uh, the original uh, task, the original aim because the big blades and trapezes uh, absolutely uh, typical in burials. Um, and we didn't see any use their trace most of the case, we didn't <coughs> see any use of trace um, uh, the stone tools which coming from the burials. And uh, to turn back the trapezes, uh, these are uh, trapeze sets, uh, trapeze uh, collections from uh, uh, free uh, graves. And uh, it's really interesting because uh, before, uh, before I show the exact, we know only seven pieces uh, seven pieces of the trapezes, the Lendial um, uh, little <coughs> materials, but Ashronik we has got uh, twenty uh, sorry two hundred fourteen uh, pieces of uh, uh, trapezes, so it's it's really um, a big high, and uh, we 
managed to define that uh, they are located uh, in the leg region or near the pelvic uh, bone uh, in a one uh, set. Um, and from the settlement assemblage, uh, we, uh, we detect uh, sickle gloss. So we suggest that maybe these trapezes, it's, uh, they are not um, used like a row hat like a sickle, a uh, part, uh, part of the sickle, and uh, maybe uh, it's just an idea that uh, how can we understand the local raw material importance and the trapeze uh, appearance in this period. And uh, what I mentioned, the mortuary practice uh, is absolutely changing in this period. So there is a liminal phase between the social death and the biological death. And uh, the technological background of to create these trapezes that uh, they broken uh, the blades and after created the retouche end and maybe the sickle and uh, this transformation uh, was one part of this liminal phase and the mortuary practices. Uh, and the final, what is uh, the future questions? Of course, I just uh, show some. Uh, the main elements of the whole question. So if we see the other uh, grave goods, the copper items, the polished uh, stone tools, uh, and other uh, vessel types, uh, I think it's really important uh, in the next uh, years uh, to understand the social inequality, and it's necessary to, to research the other materials. The big blades, like a chronological marker, I. Uh, I write a question mark because Alexander Lubinsky wrote about that uh, the Volhynian big blade and its uh, and the, its uh, fragmentation is really important um, and the macroitization technology uh, from the early Copper Age viewpoint. So maybe this shows uh, uh, maybe a precursor of early uh, Copper Age. Uh, and what is symbolized? <coughs> what is the the meaning? The metaphor in in this. Uh, late Neolithic community uh, vocabulary. And, uh, and uh, of course, from the uh, society's uh, transformation viewpoint, it's only one element. And uh, we would like to understand in a bigger level uh, what was the, um, the value and the meaning of the raw material and what uh, was the meaning from the landscape and uh, the uh, transform, uh, transformation in the burial activity. And of course, uh, what was uh, the part of the whole communica uh, communicative uh, memory, this, uh, this late, 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 uh, late Nautic community's memory. Thank you very much.